Welcome to another episode of Coaching Football with Brian Clee. Episode 5, nothing fancy as far as the intro, just going to get into the quarterback running game out of the Full House T for especially the younger coaches out there. This is going to be showing you both things from a defensive coordinator standpoint of it is usually easy to make sure you stop an opponent's top play and, and probably more importantly their top player. Um, it's when they have a very solid second complementary play and a second very good ball player and then you get into that third or in the case of the T fourth ball carrier it makes you be very very honest and disciplined with your defense um, from the offensive coordinator standpoint this is going to show you how effective series based football potentially is because the T's been pounding you a trap and power, um, and, and you're establishing that inside run game that the defense is accounted for, and then you go around them all with the quarterback. So sit back and see us defend the keep and, and follow plays by the quarterback out of the full house T. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't watched episode 3 or episode 4, these are some of our defensive philosophies, um, part of our scheme. Uh, episode 3, we covered uh, defending the trap, and episode 4, we covered defending the power. The third play in the T-series ends up being the keep, and we keep our principles the same as much as possible, as I mentioned in previous episodes. Every run fit must be consistent based on the given keys or reads that you're giving your players. Every sound defensive scheme is going to have some sort of force defender that sets the edge, inside gap fillers, an LA player running in between those guys, and somebody responsible for the backside cutback or counter. Defensively, we prefer to spill and kill on the perimeter. We believe it allows for all of our guys to have more consistent downhill fits in the run game and just play fast. And we primarily play matchup zone coverages from a too high shell. Really firmly believe that it lets us get 11 defenders to defend every play. It, it gives us a chance to get 11 tacklers on the ball carrier. And that, that as much as you coach individual tackling and, and really focus on the fundamentals of tackling, you just tackle better when you get multiple guys to the ball. So... I think it's really helpful to see, again, the how similar our fit to power and keep ends up being. Because that that's, goes back to the philosophy of, of having consistent reads and keys and fits. And, and, and it gets your players playing fast. So focusing on the keep side, if, if you want more about power, again, go back episode four. It's in the description down below. The keep play. Very, very similar to the power. The big difference, that corner has to realize that he is, as the force player, got to turn the quarterback back in. So um, really, really big on teaching our six or nine techniques. If they get a down block, if, if they choose to try and influence him with that down block, he's got to go honor the power. Um, a lot of T teams will run a power follow with the quarterback and if he doesn't close off that gap created by the lead block of the near halfback the quarterback can crease you in the, the C to D gap area and, and pick up some really big gains in that corner out there forcing it's not even going to matter so um, again we're spilling and, and killing hopefully with our corner our free safety is keying that tight end that tight end down blocks he puts hands on a four or five technique and and starts to double with that tackle that safety can start to work downhill a little bit double confirm that the the halfback's not making it out on a flag or that tight end's just ricocheting down and then working back out on some sort of pass and and he becomes the guy who the offense cannot account for um and again, that's the key part about spilling. If that ball goes out there, the, the power fake gets tackled, and the, the quarterback has to go a little bit wider, we believe we're in business. Um, Mac linebacker, if he gets that open read, he's trying to hit a run through and, and snipe the play from behind. 
got our nose and our end, our, our zero and our four technique. They're fighting double teams. Will linebacker either key in that guard or near back, whichever one you would want to do. He gets that flow away. He can start to scrape to the opposite A, close off all the gaps, and, and pursue all the way over the top. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get him on film making a tackle on the quarterback all the way out in the alley. And then corners, what lets that that backside linebacker really be aggressive at getting over the top. He's shuffling, looking for the first thing that kind of cuts back or cuts up, and, and most of the time it's the fullback traffic. If you've watched, again, previous episodes, we do not use an even too high front against the T in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, it, if, if we did, this is, this is how I'd expect to fit it. Um, you got the seven technique. He would be trying to work through that, that tight end's down block on him. The three tech's trying to split a double team. As I mentioned again in, in previous episodes, I, that Mac linebacker, Mike linebacker, whatever you want to call him in the middle, he's got to be really, really good if you're relying on an even too high front. Um, I think against all offenses, but but especially the T here because he's dealing with, oh, I, I got to fill that A gap, and I, I might I'd see that fullback fake on the trap. Uh, if I'm keying both guards, I, I know where the ball is going, but I, I got to make sure that A gap's closed first before I run sideline to sideline. Overall, uh, after that, a, a too high fit ends up being similar. You got to have a spill player. Um, to, in my opinion, uh, taking on ultimately what would be a log type block by the near halfback. Corner's got to set the edge because we're a too high cover two in this situation. Forcing the ball back in and, and the safety's running the alley. You still got the cutback backside linebacker who is, is scraping. And really, he can play that fullback, but that, that back linebacker has to really, really trust him. And then the corner's the true cutback player um, because that, that will linebacker if he did fit on that trap player the corner could keep shuffling real quickly covering the one high fits still need some way of forcing the ball if you're still spilling with a six or nine technique which uh, we're going to still coach our guys to spill because I think jumping back and forth is a, a little bit challenging especially when you're only just adding one extra inside linebacker um, and you probably coach some sort of roll cover two off of flow so that corner can force. You got your spill player, you got a fill player with your uh, stacked linebacker, the middle backer there who's the extra guy if, if we put him on the field. He can scrape closed window, closed window, closed window. He's probably actually going to be the guy that ends up running the alley fastest. If you're rolling, you might get your safety down real, real quick. And then you've got guys fighting underneath double block, du double teams or down blocks. And you got to have a cutback Clyde between that corner and that backside six or nine technique. And then keep one high, even front. Again, we want to play downhill and fast. We'll, we'll use this front at times around the goal line. And that Mac linebacker, we're expecting to hit B gap run through, maybe snap, maybe snipe. Fuck. Real quick, one high out of an odd front. Um, I, I think you're probably best if you still want to be spilling, which we want to. We don't want to teach our six and nine techniques 
hey, just because we added a set extra linebacker and took a DB off the field, now, now you're going to force the ball back inside. So if you're still spilling, I really think you should be rolling into some sort of cover two so that corner can be your force player setting the edge, make sure the quarterback runs the alley back up inside. And what I think adding the extra linebacker does, typically this guy, he's, he's got to rip underneath that tight end's down block. But if your six or nine technique is really physical here, that, that tight end's not going to get a clean release. That, that down block's going to be really flattened. And that, that inside linebacker oftentimes can, can scrape and, and really be the first guy in the alley, even if you are rolling cover two and the safety snapping eyes to that tight end and, and seeing him block and all that. One high even front. Again, we want to play downhill and fast. We will use this front and uh, this coverage at times against uh, the T, especially short yardage or, or end of game situations where, where we know they want to run the ball. Um, I didn't draw this up, but the, the backside 2i should be trying to squeeze that center's block back and hip pocket the guard. Our, our downhill player and philosophy is that, is that Mac linebacker wants to hit that B gap, see if he can snipe the play from behind. We've got our spill by our nine technique, the double teams trying to split, corners forcing, setting the edge, will linebacker. Ideally, those two eyes make sure that fullback fake goes down and he's going to scrape, see a bunch of closed windows, and, and be a bonus player out in the alley from the backside and then some sort of cutback player. Here we are with the film. The first one's going to be a power follow and it's probably my favorite defensive play ever. Absolutely just great energy by our guys. And, and the guy that's amazing on this, um, we're in a four zero four front. So we got a nine technique and, and we've got a called squeeze on, a okie dog pinch as some call it, um, by our nine techniques and our four. They're on inside movements. And it, I'm not sure, watch the tight end one more time. I'm not sure if this is, I'm pretty sure this is a sophomore kid at this point, and I'm not sure if this is called that he's supposed to be arcing, because they will arc at times, um, or, or if this kid kind of messes up assignments. But first job, get inside C-gap. Second job, get inside the halfback. Right now, that lets our corner, corner's key in that halfback and tight end. He sees the backs of jerseys. He can pull his trigger and start to support the run and play the spill. And our nine technique is just creating a complete cluster. Keeps pushing back and, and turns the play into about a four-yard loss. Let you guys see that full speed because, again, that's just one of my all-time favorite plays. Just the, the energy, I, in as much as scheme matters, getting your guys to believe and just play with a ton of energy is, is just as important. Love all the yellow shirts. You tackle well like that. So once again, our, our nine technique, and the, this is a little bit late in the film, but nine technique has completely obliterated the C-gap, the power fake, doesn't want any part of it. We're filling gaps backside and the pursuit to the ball. That's awesome. We've got two guys that are not pursuing the ball at the end. And that's because they're double checking for that fullback trap and making sure it doesn't sneak out the backside on us. Five yellow jerseys on the tackle, two more rallying, and, and the only one that's not in on the tackle is the guy that's spilled everyone. This is a, another uh, great example of, of just having a lot of energy. A little bit undersized kid here. He probably weighed like 160 pounds, but very athletic, very strong for his size. Our backside inside linebacker is going to do a great job. I think he's going to help make it the tackle out the alley here. So right now, he sees the guard away. He sees flow away. He knows he can start to scrape across the midline because his corner 
and safety will have his cutback. We've got the spill by the nine tech player on the top. Uh, he's making sure he's definitely inside the kickout. He probably actually can see the quarterback meshing on the power fake right now. Puts his foot in the ground, gets hands on. He holds on with one hand, and that's our Will linebacker. We'll take it back and, and watch one time real quick from the from the get-go. Um, but that's the Will linebacker all the way from the backside making the play out in the, the alley, really, because we've, we've spilled the ball. Great job by that linebacker. Keeps his shoulders square. Makes the tackle out there. And th this is a big play. I, I believe we're down by two scores. It's somewhere early in the third quarter. I think we've only stopped them once the entire game at this point. Um, just turned into a little bit of more of a barn burner than us defensive coordinators would like. And the play by that nine technique. That's everything we coach him to do. Hands. Uh, he doesn't get great hands on the tight end. But he steps down. He's inside, gets a hand on the quarterback, doesn't let go, gives his teammates a chance to rally. This, we hit a run through, I think. I think with our inside linebacker. And now this is call. It's, it's a blaze in this case. But if he's really feeling downhill hard, he should be able to do this almost any time on the quarterback play because it happens just a little slower. Fits the B gap. Tackles really both the, the power fake and the, the quarterback. And, and honestly, I'm pretty sure that was going to be quarterback pulling. Right? We'll watch the end zone view. So we got the 30 tech, Mac linebacker. He's going to shoot the B-gap. He's, he's blitzing. Hits it. And he tackles the guy with the ball. And I think the quarterback ended up not trying to pull it because it, it might have been a fumble. Kind of a heads-up play by the uh, quarterback there, really. Here we are. Big, big game. Both of us are trying to go to the playoffs in week eight a few years ago. And uh, we, we catch him with our hip-pocketing uh, will linebacker running through the backside A-gap. Does a great job. Hip-pocket. Ball's down. And we're excited. And I'd rather time this up and hit it, but the kid started doing this the way in the early part of the season and we coached him up to bluff it and then take a couple steps back and, and read his guard and his near back like he's coached up to do but he hits it the and this is why we prefer an odd front the center doesn't block back on him because the nose is slanting center gets hooked up on him and that lets the will linebacker come through completely clean and, and make a tackle for no gain on fourth and six, we're off the field. All right. This is just a great fit by everybody. Good pursuit angles. Make the kid run a long way for no gain. So uh, they're going to bring everybody here. They're, they're faking that power ISO that I've shown in episode four and then the quarterback f follows all of it and right now I mean we've got this thing fit up corner is forcing he sets the edge the five tech and stud linebacker they're reaching their reach blocks our Mac linebacker is in position for a cutback we got our nose back in a gap and, and they have not cut off pursuit of some of our backside guys. Let's just see that one more time.
let you see that one more time. We actually, our, our nose is going away from the play, but we've got great pursuit. Ball runs all the way to the sideline, nowhere to go. Uh, a great example of spill and kill. So now here's keeps. Again, that's that super style, what we call it. All three backs are going to be leading. And we get a great fill out of our play side inside linebacker. And we're excited at the end of that one. That, that clinched the ball game this past year. Well-coached team on, on both sides, and our guys just came out a little bit ahead. 30-tech Will Linebacker, he's looking. Is there open window? Does my guard pull? Does my back come at me? He's downhill. Now this one is, is not on a blitz. He sees guard, down block that, that center. He sees an open window. He sees full flow, and the quarterback's going to try and circle the defense. That, that Mac linebacker, he actually decides the B gap is, is filled because the 5 tech gets pushed into it. Scrapes over top of the C gap double and ends up putting his shoulder pads on the near hip and makes the tackle shorter the sticks and we're partying. So another time we got a squeeze called and we got really confident with the idea that we're, we're going to give up the edge, maybe, with our nine technique. We're going to fill that C gap, and we were okay with it because it's going to speed up the trigger of our force player in our corner, and it's going to ensure that at least one of these inside linebackers, if not both, are, are going to be able to make it clean to the ball. Sure enough, there's our Mac linebacker. Makes the play for about a two-yard gain. And the, the nice thing about having that inside movement called, and again, if they make a couple blocking adjustments, they, they, they can catch us. I'll, I'll admit that. There's no silver bullet. But we are going to completely cancel C-gap to C-gap. And right now, there's there's not a running lane left. The full back trap, I've lost it. Our corner in our backside safety, great, great example of eye discipline. They are looking for it. They're trying to find it. Our inside linebackers are, are trusting it's down. They're trusting the teammates have their cut back. And they are scraping, filling to the quarterback keep or spilled power. And again... Great example of, of why you want to spill and, and try to cut, kill. They're uh, running power fox, power follow. And, and this is why I think you still got to be teaching that nine technique to spill off a down block. It, it's hard to tell. Is that power? Is that quarterback following it? We don't know for sure until the ball bounces outside. And you get a bunch of hats to the ball, a bunch of pink jerseys. It's breast cancer awareness night. And, and we're making a big play. Nine tech, uh, Bob linebacker, real strong, real, real tough kid. But he's like 170 pounds. And that, that tight end across from him is 200 pounds. He's got good knee bend, though, good pad level. He's spilled the kick out in the D gap. Our C gap, our five tech is in there. Our will linebacker is scraping tight, looking to fill an open window. Our backside linebacker has scraped across. Saw A gaps closed by the nose. He's trying to run through B gap. We got our safety starting to fit in the alley. And our, our corner's going to be able to be completely unblocked. Confirms that that ball's coming out at him. Sets the edge. Perfect. Perfect defense. So this one, we're going to get a good example of, of DBs working to the ball. Real good play by our safety. So right now, that, that safety's keying the tight end first. He's going to 
Yep, he's blocking. He's, he's trying to kick out, maybe even reach our nine technique. Safety's eyes should be going to that halfback, making sure that halfback isn't still releasing on some sort of pass route. That halfback is going flat. Safety's eyes are probably there. We filled a bunch of the inside gaps. Safety knows he can be downhill. He sees the back of that halfback. The, the, his numbers are turned. I'm going to aim for that near hip and make a great open field tackle. Here we are, just a great all-around fit downhill by our linebackers. Picked up a little more yardage on that one. So right now we are, we are in a movement, um, trying to make something happen a little bit. Um, they are a tendency to run to their right just a little bit more than, than runs their left. So guards going to wrap up here. They're on blocking again, the, the five and the nine technique. Our guard has an open window. You start our linebacker. Fills downhill. He's starting to tackle, I believe that's the power fake. So now we all know where the ball is. Corner setting the edge. He, he could step up maybe a little harder, and maybe instead of a three yard gain, this turns into one. But the edge is set. Great job by that nine technique. He, he's fighting the kick out or, or reach block by the tight end. Strung it out, and uh, he's going to help the corner make the tackle for a short gain. That's kind of just a good overall play, both sides of the ball. Here we go. Um, this is going to really illustrate the the cutback pursuit that the corner gets, that we get out of the corner. Um, this is again late in, late in a ball game. Actually, um, the the two six techniques were starters. We didn't have as much depth at that outside backer spot, and I think you need a little bit of a more special kid there. Um, but inside, we're we're all junior backups. I'm pretty sure. Um, Inside linebackers a junior, those those corners are, are junior backups. And this kid, he's searching. Well, the fullback ain't got it. Power fake's dead. Keep running. And just a really, really good collision over there. End zone view. Pause it when we get our gaps fit. So right now, C gap filled. A gap filled. Inside linebackers downhill through B gap. Nose is in the play side A. Backside linebacker starting to scrape across. Guard goes and the, the near back goes. Um, backside we're pursuing. You see the corner. He, he's searching. Did the fullback trap make it out? Nope. Did the power make it out? No, that, that's tackled. That's down too. I knew it was the ball. And again, we, he only gets that opportunity because we've got a, a spill mentality. Here's that, that super keep again. This display is, is absolutely incredible, in my opinion, by our 5 tech. He's on a called squeeze. They get a ton of wash. And, and that's, that's one of the downsides or one of the negatives about squeezing. But the edge gets really, really short for our inside linebacker to fill. You've got our corner aggressively setting the edge. He, he feels it's going to be run in this situation. He sees the back come at him with, with a block mentality. He knows the safety's got his back if, if he runs anything deeper. And the safety fits in the alley. Again, keep your eyes on this five tech. We're going to watch it full speed real quick. Down inside, he's aiming for the guard. Starts to get washed by that tackle. And, and we've actually drilled this. If, if I feel outside pressure, I can work, start to work back outside. Right there, you see him. He's put his foot in the ground and he's just going to run his butt off. And he's right there. I, mean, I really think 
as much as that safety makes the play, you got to love the effort out of a kid like that. I, I, I think he finds a way to snipe that maybe all by himself. End zone view quick. Here we go, the end zone view. Full flow, that five tech, and like I said, he's squeezing. Knows the ball's not there. Gets back outside and helps our safety make the play in the alley. And, and really, that's the safety alley fit, but still, great effort. A follow play there. End zone shot. So we get. Guard back away, that backside inside linebacker knows he can start to scrape to the opposite A. Our nose is going to do a decent job flipping his hips, getting in the A gap. Our play side linebacker is downhill. He's fitting, I believe that's underneath the tight end and C gap. We've got our nine technique. He's making sure the ball fill, spills even further. And that backside inside linebacker gets all the way over the top, gets on the legs, and, and makes a nice tackle in the alley. And what's really sweet about this, with the spill philosophy and, and by playing cut back by the backside corner and, and safety, that lets this linebacker play really aggressively. Our force player is still there, setting the edge, and our safety is still yet unblocked. And then this play's been long developing. And we're getting multiple guys to the ball. We got multiple chances to make a tackle. And like I said, you, you tackle better when you do that. This play is going to illustrate how much just a, a really good zero technique makes you a better defensive coordinator. Gets off the ball. It's impressive because he almost single-handedly stops an outside play from the A-gap. Um, Corner does a great job of forcing the quarterback to keep up in the alley. Comes up, sets the edge. I'm frustrated at our nine technique. The positive is he made sure the ball spilled. So we freeze it right there. He's inside the halfback kick out. So that quarterback cannot keep him inside. He's forced to the alley. Our corner's setting the edge. And now... They did not double team our five tech. He's free to rip across. And ultimately, almost makes the tackle. Our backside inside linebacker gets all the way over. And we're keeping him extra clean. We're, we're in a modified even front. I believe we got a two and a zero technique because my, my head coach is like, let's not take him off the ball. And he's right with that call. Our, our will linebacker, they no pulled on us, so he's, he's just a step slower. But he gets across, runs flat, and, and because the ball had to go extra wide, he's able to make the stop for a fourth and three. As always, guys, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Check me out and follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Um, don't forget to su subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And if you have uh, anything that maybe requires a longer response, hit me up at coachbrianclee at gmail.com. Thanks as always for tuning in. See you again.